Did you know that you use around 46 gallons of water every day? You use it to wash your hair, clean your clothes, rinse the dishes for drinking, and for that too. Your wastewater, along with almost every other home and building in Portland, has to go somewhere. Where do you think that is? And how does it get there? Well, most of it will eventually end up in the Columbia River. But before that, we'll need to clean it, filter out the bits of food, soap, oil, and all that other gross stuff too. Our wastewater, plus some stormwater runoff from the streets, travels by gravity in underground pipes all across Portland. When there's a hill in the way, we use huge pumps to help it arrive here at the wastewater treatment plant. This is where we clean the water, generate renewable energy, and even return nutrients to our soil. It all starts here at the Headworks. Inside are these massive pumps. When they're running full blast, like during a huge rainstorm, they move 13 school buses worth of wastewater every minute. Next, the flow passes through these devices called bar screens. Look how they filter out all sorts of stuff like sticks, rocks, toys, and trash. So much trash. Once the big pieces are removed, sewage is sent through these machines. They have a specially shaped tank that makes the water spin like a tornado. The liquid moves really fast on the outside and slower as you get to the middle. In the center, grit and other solids settle onto an auger that separates them from the wastewater. Removed grit and larger trash fall from this conveyor belt into dumpsters, which get trucked to the landfill. You might be wondering what it smells like in here right now. Let me tell you, it's a really, really not good smell. Fortunately for us, we have a special system that sucks up the smelly air and blows it across these. They grab the odor molecules and keep them from floating into our noses. From here, the liquids and solids that are left enter the primary clarifiers. These giant pools slow down the flow of wastewater so the solids, or sinkers, can settle to the bottom where they get scraped into sludge. The floaters, mostly fats, oils, and grease, form a scum on the top and get skimmed off as well. We'll use these later, so let's come back to that. Next, the liquid flows to these huge aeration tanks this is where the real magic happens. You'll need a microscope to see it, but in that brown water are trillions of microorganisms eating sewage. We bubble air in to help keep them feeding and reproducing. Then we monitor the amount of oxygen left in the water to tell when they're getting full. Check it out. There's sensors and cameras and devices all over the treatment plant, and they all connect to the control room. People and computers are working here all day, every day. They're watching the plant and the citywide system to make sure things are working right. Is a big storm coming? They have to be prepared. If anything breaks, there's a whole crew on site to fix it in a hurry. These millwrights use special tools like vibration sensors and infrared cameras that can find worn out parts while the machines are still moving. Back to our wastewater. It's now entering the secondary clarifiers. The bottoms of these tanks are like a nice comfy couch where our microorganisms can chill out and wait until they get hungry again. Once that happens, they're collected and get recycled back to the aeration tanks. Let's sample the wastewater going in and out to make sure things are working right. Look at the water coming out. It's so clear. Aren't these microorganisms amazing? At this point, the liquids have nearly finished treatment. Next, we add chlorine to kill off any remaining harmful organisms. Then we remove it to make the water safer for animals and humans. Regular testing is performed to protect water quality. Finally, the water goes through underground pipes and is released here into the Columbia River. Now that we've recovered the water, let's go see what's happening with the solids. Remember how we separated the sludge and the scum? Here's where that stuff ends up, inside the digester. This huge building works like our digestive system. The sludge is food for the microorganisms inside, and the scum is like candy. As they eat, they poop out methane gas. Using a floating ceiling, we capture this gas and use some of it to generate electricity and heat for the plant. The rest gets turned into renewable natural gas that we will use to run vehicles. The leftovers from the digester go through this building. Inside is a machine called a belt press. It squeezes out the last bits of liquid and makes a biosolids cake. Yum, cake! But this cake isn't for eating. It's actually really rich organic matter full of nutrients. We send it to Eastern Oregon to enrich pasture land, growing grass and feed for animals. 
Plus, the healthier soil and plants can store more carbon too. And that's how we take the wastewater from our whole city, clean it, produce energy from it, and use what's left to improve soil. This is happening every day, all day, and you can help too. What you flush matters. The only things that should go down the toilet are the three P's. Pee, poop, and paper. No baby wipes, no toys, no leftover medications, and no fats or grease from your kitchen. With your help, we can keep the whole system, well, flowing smoothly. Thanks for watching.